Today, I'm going to show you how to use the contour drawing style to create a finished work of art highlighting hands. You will need a pencil, some sort of drawing pen or set of drawing pens, a glue stick, a pair of scissors, and two colorful contrasting pieces of paper. The finished artwork is bright, colorful, showcases your drawing skills without having to focus on shading and super realism. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. Starting out, you are going to be drawing your hands from direct observation using the contour drawing style. Contour drawing is one continuous line where you look at the object more than you look at your paper and you focus just on outer edges or the contours of the object that you're drawing. So there's no shading, it's just on drawing what you're looking at. I love this technique because it is the best way, in my opinion, to learn how to draw things from direct observation and how to really practice your hand-eye coordination. What I'm doing now is following along the outer edges of each of my fingers and I'm moving my pencil as my eye is looking. You'll notice I'm drawing very, uh, I'm drawing very slowly and I'm focusing on what I'm actually seeing and not what I think that a hand actually looks like. With my students, we do blind contour drawing practices first, and if you're interested in learning more about that technique, click the link above. With contour drawing, I'm using a pencil, and that is because my students are going to be doing this several times, and a lot of times students feel more comfortable using a pencil than a pen. We will go back and ink these, and the reason why I like to do it this way is to build confidence with students, really practice what you're gonna do, get familiar with it, and then you can go back with the pen, re-look at your hand, re-look at whatever you're drawing and go from there. So you can see I'm wrapping around my finger here and I'm not avoiding the wrinkles and the details in my hand. Because this is all about hand-eye coordination, it is literally a roadmap of what your eye is looking at as you're looking at it. So you might have to draw some interesting lines. Yes, I just cheated and erased a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna go back in, um, putting my pencil down where I left it. So I'm not walking around the room hitting my students' hands with a ruler if they pick up their pen or pencil, but it's a good practice to put it right back down where you left off, but sometimes you have to stretch your hand a little bit or your hand gets kind of in a weird cramped position. So if you do pick up your pencil or pen, whatever material you are using, just make sure to put it right back down in that spot. You can see I'm going in, I'm getting wrinkles that are in my hands. And I always recommend when drawing hands, don't just stop uh, short where your wrist is, extend it down so you have a nice long kind of two sides to your hand leading into the arm. I am gonna go back and add some fine lines that I maybe missed the first time. Remember, contour is one continuous line. So to get back to those areas, I have to travel and add lines or draw over lines that I've drawn before. Not only am I including my wrist and parts of my arm, I am also including my Fitbit watch just to give it a little bit of extra detail. If you have rings or jewelry or nail art or tattoos, include all of those and that will make your hand drawing stand out even more. If you're a beginner, definitely start simple with an easy hand gesture and blind contour drawing is a really great place to start where you look at the object only and you don't look at your paper. I like to start that with my students where we'll do maybe three together before drawing the regular contour style. I'm gonna speed things up and if you're interested in watching me draw hands slowly, click the link above and I will walk you through hand drawing slowly with the contour style. I'm going to show you different hand positions and I'm following all the same rules that I talked about before. I sped things up double the speed I drew this in real life. So if you're wondering that why is she drawing so quickly, that is simply to save time for the attention span of my students and I'm using the exact same slow hand-eye coordination, one continuous line without picking up my pencil. So I'm speeding things up so that you can kind of see the full picture of this finished work of art and not just the contour style itself. I'm gonna double time it and do a time lapse here so I have all of the hands that I'm gonna use for my final composition. And again, the focus of this video is the finished work of art and not so much the exact contour drawing style. The next step is outlining or inking your hands so that the line quality really stands out. I'm using Sharpies in this video because that's the materials my students use just because they're pretty affordable and they work decently well. If you have a pack of drawing pens, that would be a great thing to use as well. I like to do a fat or I should say a thick Sharpie and a fine point Sharpie to go back in and capture all of my details. 
Um, again, so the contour drawing style was done in pencil and then I'm inking it with the pen to make the line stand out. If you are an advanced artist or you want to level up, you can do this without drawing in pencil first. But I have found that my students get really nervous if they're turning something in for a grade or they're doing something that has in their mind to look perfect or look a certain way. I also encourage you with the contour drawing style, perfection isn't the goal. It's a moment in time. You're capturing an object for this instance, it's our hands. And it's not about it being scientifically perfect like Michelangelo painted it. It's just capturing the most basic information and really focusing on line quality. It's all about learning how to draw from direct observation. I do have my more advanced classes not use a pencil first, but I think a pencil is kind of like training wheels for this technique. It allows you to make changes if you want to, because the whole point of doing this technique is to learn and to grow and to get better at drawing from direct observation. So if it makes you feel better to use a pencil, I'm all for it. I am using my eraser to erase any pencil lines because I want this to have a really nice finished clean look to it. And then I'm gonna speed things up um, double time, maybe even time lapse. Um, because all I'm doing are repeating the same steps of using my Sharpie to outline the most important lines. I also like redoing my lines in pen because it gives me an opportunity to go back and check my work, check my hand gesture, and make sure everything's exactly where I want it to be before I cut things out. So you could draw directly on the paper you would like to use. You could do watercolor backgrounds, you could draw zentangle patterns, but we're going to be cutting our hands out in kind of a blocky illustration style and we're going to be attaching them to another bright colorful piece of paper. So what I'm doing first is a rough cut where I'm just cutting around the hands. You'll notice two of my hands interact, that thumb goes into the one and so I kind of like that. It will limit my composition a little bit but I'll kind of play around with how I want to arrange. Then as you see I'm going to go back in with my um, scissors and I'm going to cut closer to my line making sure it's a clean cut. I'm getting rid of all the green or the background area. One good thing is you're going to be gluing it down and then you have the chance to touch up any lines, add a thicker line if you want to, to really make it stand out on your paper. I did speed this up. This is about twice the normal speed and I'm going to time lapse once you see me do it again. I assume that you know how to use scissors and you know how to cut it out and this will just give you the overview of this step and how to move on to the final one. You could also use X-Acto knives, but I found that scissors work just as well getting in all those cracks and crevices. I drew four hands, but you can draw more or less depending on what your goals are for this work of art. Finally, after all that hard work of practicing, drawing, outlining, and cutting, it's time to create your composition. Composition in art refers to the plan, the arrangement, the organization of the elements in your artwork. So I'm a little bit limited with this attached hand here because I want it to line up in my corner. You could trim your hands a little bit so that they fit, but you don't want it to look like it's like a detached, severed hand, like in the middle of your paper, unless that's your thing and you do it intentionally. So the arrangement of my hands is very important. I wanna balance out my negative space or my background. And you could look at American Sign Language. You could use certain hand gestures, hopefully nice, appropriate ones, um, to tell a story in your work of art, or it could just be a series of hands kind of arranged around your paper in a satisfying way. I'm using just an Elmer's glue stick. It is purple, but it dries clear. And I have found that this works way better than the liquidy school glue because it wrinkles your paper. Try to keep the mess of glue off your paper, but if you're messy like me, just get a paper towel or something to wipe it up. And again, it does dry clear, but a big glob of it would be kind of distracting. So I think I have my arrangement. Um, I like how the hands are kind of interacting with each other. This one I didn't have to trim because it did fit in the corners and edges. And so I have four hands in my composition. You might end up having more or less. And I did challenge myself to draw life size. I wanted my hands to be about the size they are in real life. Um, I didn't measure them or anything like that. And oh, there's one of my practices I'm using because I felt really messy with the glue. So I'm using that. Um, you could use a page of your sketchbook, newspaper, a paper towel, just so you can get all the way to the edges of your hands that you cut out without um, getting glue all over your final paper. Once you have that done, then you can just kind of place it and press to make sure it has a really nice flat surface. Once you're finished gluing and you press all the way around to make sure it's clean and you can't get your finger underneath any of your glued pieces, and I do like to do that with a paper towel, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I like to go back with a pencil or an eraser um, and erase my lines to make sure it's just clean, as nice and neat, neat as I can get it. 
And then one final touch that is optional, but really I recommend it because you cutted these, cutted. I meant to say because you cut these hands out, you did kind of cut into, or at least I did, the thick Sharpie line that I did around them. My colors are very nice and contrasting, but I want that extra pop. So I'm going to take my thick Sharpie, and if you don't have one, just kind of double up your line with your thin one. And I want it to be a really clear, nice, thick line on the contour outer edges of each of my hands. So that's pretty much it. This is such a great way to gain confidence in drawing hands. Also the kind of graphic style where it's like a colorful hand over a punchy piece of paper in the background. It gives it just a really nice composition where it's not focused on shading and it being super realistic, but you can show off and draw some really amazing hands. You can focus on composition or maybe the theme of communication. Um, and the finished results are really eye-catching, really fun to look at, and I've always, or my students are always surprised at how much better their hands look than they think they are going to. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me, and I hope you learned something about drawing hands and composition. If you're interested in more art tutorials, especially drawing, check these out. Also, if you're interested in what my students are up to currently in my classroom, find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore Machado and my website thatartteacher.com for full-length lesson plans and student examples.